Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to a Tuesday episode of Five Minutes with Phil, and I am thrilled that you're with me here today. I pray that uh, things are going well for you, and I uh, thank you for the chance to share God's Word with you here today. Uh, this morning, we're going to take a look at kind of a lengthy passage from uh, the book of Job. The book of Job. Now, Here's, here's kind of the setting, okay? Job has gone through a lot of difficulty because the devil has tried to uh, just destroy him without killing him, but has inflicted him, uh, taken away his possessions. Uh, just, just awful things have taken place in Job's life. And not once did he... Uh, curse God. But there, there's uh, something that I found in Job chapter 2, starting in verse 11, that I think would speak well to those of us who have friends that are going through difficulty and going through some problems. Maybe I could share that with you here today. Let, let me show you. Job chapter 2, beginning in verse 11. It says, when three of Job's friends heard of the tragedy that he had suffered, they got together and they traveled from their homes to comfort and console him. Their names were Eliphaz the Temanite, Bildad the Shuhite, and Zohar the, Na the Nathite. When they saw Job from a distance, they scarcely recognized him. And wailing loudly, they tore their robes and they threw dust into the air over their heads to show their grief. Then they sat on the ground with him for seven days. No one said a word to Job, for they saw that his suffering was too great for words. Now, if you read the rest of the book of Job, you, you find out that Job's friends weren't always at their best for Job. But here, there, there's, a, there's an element here that I think is really important. And it's a good lesson to those of us who care about somebody who's going through some difficulty. And I, I am uh, I, I'm touched by how they were grieved because Job was going through so much. It hurt them to see Job hurting. And I think that kind of empathy is lacking in a lot of relationships where uh, I, I've seen it, maybe even in the church, where people are quick to judge. They're quick to say, well, if he hadn't done this and if he hadn't done that, then things wouldn't be that. And there was none of that. There was no speculating what Job did wrong. They were really hurt by what Job was going through and it crushed them and I would really encourage you to ask the Lord to give you that kind of empathy for people that are hurting and th there's a th <laughs> the last sentence that we read uh, two sentences that we read I think were really powerful let me repeat those it says they sat on the ground with him for seven days and nights. No one said a word to Job, for they saw that his suffering was too great for words. Do you know what I think a lot of followers of Jesus are guilty of? A lot of times I think we are guilty of thinking that we have to have the answer every time somebody is going through a battle. That we just need to turn to our favorite verse and throw it at them. And there's, I get that. But do you know what? Sometimes our friends just need us to be present and not feel like they have to fix anything. Sometimes the ones that we love, they, they just need to be there and exist. And you don't even have to say a word to somebody. And yet your presence can make an enormous difference. Can, can I liberate you from the pressure of having to find all the answers for somebody who is hurting in your life today? Maybe all they need is your presence, and that very well could be enough. 
So I want to encourage you with that today. Let's feel what our friends are feeling and let's, more than thinking we got to solve or fix everything, let's just be present. And let's see how the Lord might work through that. Okay, I got to let you go. I hope you have a wonderful day. And Lord willing, we'll see you tomorrow. You take care. Bye-bye.